Verse 3, he was explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. Now, this is a tricky point, but I, I pray that we'll get this together. What Paul is saying and what he's about to say is arguably the single most important point in all the scriptures. And I do not in any way want to minimize that. Paul is going to the religious people from the scriptures, and he's about to not only discuss, but prove and undergird the validity of Jesus being the Savior, the Lord, the Christ, the Messiah. But again, I want to equip you as a pastor and a missionary. I want to do my best to take God's word, understand its purpose, and transfer that to you. And in this passage, my prayer is that you will see a principle that is wrapped in these particulars that will help to empower you, to empower you to be the person that God has called you to be on purpose. You see, what Paul is doing here in the reasoning, in the proving, in the explaining, is he's recognizing where his audience is in their unbelief. And he's addressing it by meeting them where they are. You see, these are Jews who do not want to believe in or accept a Christ a Messiah, an anointed one, a Savior, a Lord, that would ever suffer. I mean, think about it. You may have had people that would say to you, hey, listen, if your God is a God that would hang on a cross and suffer, I I certainly don't want a God like that. The Jews who were now resisting the gospel, who would not believe in Jesus, the Christ, were doing it in large part because they didn't want to accept the truth that their Savior, that their Messiah, would suffer. And they didn't necessarily buy into the whole truth of Christ rising from the dead. So that's why Paul is bringing this to them. Again, it's the most important truth in all the Bible. But let me just say that if you've got a friend or somebody you know and love, and their number one uh, reason for rejecting Christ is that they believe in evolution. They don't have a problem with some of what you say in regards to Christ. Their great obstacle or their biggest stumbling is situation A, B, C, D, whatever it might be. You and I want to meet them where they are. Bring the truth from God's word that meets them where they are. Now, there's some universal truth of the gospel that has to be shared with everyone every time. For example, that we are all sinners in need of a Savior, that Christ alone is the only way, and that there is no good news, there is no salvation outside of Christ alone, Uh, that we are saved by grace through faith alone. And these foundational, fundamental truths must be shared at all times. But what Paul is doing here is he's meeting his lost audience in the midst of their lostness, right where they are. And he's telling them the truth that they need to hear. He's not working a general formula. Another example, perhaps, um, you have a friend who's gone through a tragedy, an absolute tragedy. And in the midst of their sorrow and grief, they're having a difficult time recognizing that God is not only sovereign, but he is loving and he cares and that he doesn't want any of us to have a grief that brings us to despair. Well, it wouldn't be the best option for you or me to go and now begin to bring some truths about end times eschatology. Well, this is how the Bible says the world is going to ultimately surrender to Christ. No, what would be best would be to take them to the place where Lazarus is about to be drawn out of the tomb by the miraculous power of Jesus and show the person to whom you are now speaking that in that context, Jesus wept. 
You would want to show them the truth that brings to them the touch that perhaps they most need at that moment. Let us not become robots with Christian formulas where we go out and we just bark truth. You see, one of the beautiful things about Paul, which reflects Christ, is the compassion. The compassion to meet people where they are. Again, unwavering, uncompromised, always from God's truth, always with God's love, but also in a custom-fitting way. Paul is speaking to these Jews, and so he brings to them the truth of Christ as Messiah, because that's what they need. That's what their deception, that's what their unbelief is chewing on, and that's what's sustaining them. So he brings the truth that fits their problem. Let us be people who do the same. He said to them, this Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. Again, this is the single most important statement, not only in the Bible, but in all of life. Jesus is Lord. Now, there's a lot to unpack in that powerful truth, but that is what Paul is saying to these unbelieving Jews. I pray that you and I will have the opportunity when we come into our contexts of unbelief, when we come into the midst of our skeptics and our doubters, to care enough to reason, to discuss, to explain, and yes, to prove from the scriptures the truth that they need to hear. But let us not become so mechanical and so robotic so disconnected that we lose our sense of compassion in the midst of our professed passion. Please see this. Yes, it is the truth. This Christ that we proclaim is the Lord. And if there's something else you need, some other part of God's word that would come across as the soothing ointment and gentle breeze that you need, which, by the way, is a part of the definition of meekness, then we as missionaries will be willing, I pray, to be meek enough to bring the soothing ointment and the gentle breeze of truth that comes out of the fruit of the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. Don't lose sight of this. Paul is not a broken record. He's meeting the lostness where they are and he's bringing the truth that they specifically need